Section 2 of Building Games with Scratch 2.0. Breakout, let's create a simple ball and paddle game. In Section 2, we'll create a bouncing ball. Later, we'll add ball death and paddle bounce. We'll add a brick that vanishes when we hit it. We'll create a whole wall of bricks with cloning, which is new to Scratch 2.0, and we'll add a win game state. If you were going to try to do something like this in a traditional programming language, you'd have to do a lot more work up front. I will touch on some important computer science concepts like objects, iteration, and messaging, but I'll try not to let that get in the way of making a fun little quick and dirty game. We'll start by signing in, and we'll create a new project. Scratch shows us this default project. We don't need the cat character for this project. Instead, I'm going to import a thing. We'll use this basketball. This ball is really too big for this screen, so what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that when the program starts by the green flag being clicked, go to Looks, and we will set the size of this object to 25%. And now, yeah, that's a little bit better. Now let's make the ball move. When the green flag is clicked, we want it to move forward 10 steps. Right now, when I click the green flag, Scratch moves the ball forward 10 steps and then stops. We want the ball to keep moving forward, so we will go to Control and put this Move statement inside a forever block. Scratch won't actually move the object off the screen. It'll stick there on the edge. But we want the ball to bounce. Well, fortunately, there's a block for that. Motion, if on edge, bounce. So let's try it. Aha! Okay, well, that's kind of boring. Let's add a little randomness. Under Motion, we'll go to Point in Direction, and we'll go to Operators, and we'll pick Random Number from minus 45 to 45. And what that will do is it means every time the game starts, minus 45 to 45 would be an arc that's moving upward. Okay? It's time now that we create the paddle that we'll use to bounce the ball and actually play the game. I'm going to click here on Paint New Sprite. That opens up some editing tools. Click this Rectangle tool. And see this very faint crosshair? That represents the center of your image. I'm going to draw a flat rectangle a little bit below that crosshair. Over here in the window that Scratch calls the stage, I'm going to drag this paddle down here. With my new Paddle Sprite selected, I'm going to click on the Scripts tab, and now I'm going to assemble these blocks. From Events, I'm going to get When Green Flag Clicked. From Control, I will get a Forever Block. From Motion, I'm going to get Set X to... I will set the X coordinate of this paddle equal to... Let's go to Sensing, and I'm going to get the Mouse X coordinate. That will track the horizontal position of the paddle to the position of the mouse. Now, I've been referring to this sprite as the paddle, but when I created it, Scratch gave it a generic name. I'm going to click on this I button, which will allow me to rename this, and I will call it paddle. And then I click the triangle. Now this sprite is called paddle. Let's run it and see. Yep, there we go. Okay, so the paddle is tracking the X position of my mouse, but of course I haven't written any code to make the ball bounce off the paddle yet. Now while you never have much control over the ball in a breakout game, we can at least let the player launch the ball when ready. We're going to add some simple code that will make the ball follow the paddle until the user presses the space bar. So we need to go to the ball and we're going to add some code that says from the control tab, repeat until the condition we're going to check for is the space bar being pressed. And the thing that we're going to repeat is making the ball go to, not the mouse pointer, but the paddle. And we're going to drop this code right in here. And now let's run it and see what happens. Okay. So the ball is kind of stuck there on the paddle, and I hit the space bar, and we fire the ball off. Okay, now again, I haven't written anything to make the ball bounce off the paddle, but we'll get to that in a minute. 
We've created a paddle that we can control with the mouse, and we can launch the ball from the paddle. What's next? Well, in our next video, we'll make the ball bounce off the paddle, and we'll make the game end if the player misses the ball.